morning. I hope that you can join me today. I'm Debbie Broughton, your Stampin' Up! demonstrator from St. Robert, Missouri. I am just checking things out here to see if my picture looks right and that I'm not sideways or upside down. So, if you're here, if you could put a comment in the comment comment area, I will know that. And now you can hear the echo from my laptop. I'm turning it off. Okay. So, today we're going to be learning about the soft pastel assortment that's new in this catalog. And I was going to tell you what page this is on in the in the new catalog. Let me just check that. I meant to have this ready, but I forgot. Let me see. I can find it here real quick. So, I hope you're all having a great day. It's a Tuesday. It's, of course, it's a little cloudy here today, which we needed a little bit of rain. Everything was getting a little bit dry, so we got a little bit of rain overnight, and we might get a little bit more today. I'm sorry I didn't have this ready. I meant to. Okay, it is on page 126 of the new catalog, right along with the markers and the colored pencils, and you get eight colors, and they are nine dollars, and these chalks, pastels, I'm sorry, are going to last a very long time. I'll... Hi, Barb. I will go over the colors for you so that you can know what colors you're getting. This is Night of Navy, Granny Apple Green, Coastal Cabana, Gorgeous Grape, Mossy Meadow, Poppy Parade, Mango Melody, and Daffodil Delight. Oh, thanks, Barb. I don't think we really need too much rain because we're supposed to get some today and tomorrow. So we're probably just a little bit behind you with you being in Arkansas. Sometimes it comes up this way from Arkansas. So the first technique that I'm going to show you is making a marbleized background. Now I'm not sure if you can see this because I used the lighter colors on this one. So it just made a very light like marbled background here. I used the Poppy Parade, the Mango Melody, and the Daffodil Delight. So today we're going to use the darker colors and see if we can get a more dramatic effect. Now there's a several ways you can do this. You can use your scissors, you can use a razor blade, you can use the spatula part of your Picatool. But what we want to do is we're going to take some Knight of Navy here. And don't worry, this looks like you're going to use a lot. But pastels are kind of like embossing powder. They last forever. So I'm just going to scrape some onto the surface of this water. You want kind of a shallow container to put this in because you don't need a lot of water. It is a pretty yellow. 
Okay, now we're going to put in, you want to kind of, when you're scraping, you want to do it on the same side all the time. So we're going to put in a little granny apple green now in here. Okay, that looks like pretty good. And then a little bit of Coastal Cabana. This technique kind of reminds me of the shaving cream technique that we used to do. And I know you're going to just hate to have to scrape your pastels, but in a lot of these techniques, this is what you're going to have to do. But don't worry, like I said, it's kind of like embossing powder. They're going to last for a really long time. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. We're going to take our spa spatula end of our pick -a tool and we're just kind of, kind of, kind of swirl this around a little. Can you see some of it is, is laying on top of the water? Then we're going to take our watercolor paper and we're going to lay it flat on the top. And then we're going to very gently pick it up. Now notice I didn't get any all over so I'm going to try again to get some more to come to the top here. This is kind of like you, you never know what you're going to get when you do these. So I got a little bit more and I need a little bit more in this corner. So I'm going to stir again. I could always add some more pastels to the top too, which I think I might have to do just to get that corner. Let me lay that down and I'm just going to scrape some more Coastal Cabana in here. And then I'm going to lay my paper, that corner, right there on top. You kind of get one one shot at this. So we're gonna let this dry a little bit. And then as you can see it kind of swirled here and there. Maybe I needed a little bit more powder. I have to tell you that the video went out on my laptop, but I think that's because I'm sometimes my broadband internet is not very good out here in the country. I'm just going to try this again, but what you can do is let this dry and then start over again to get some more on this side. But that was that is the idea. Sometimes things just don't work out exactly right when you're doing it live. And we'll just have to go with it. But some more is kind of appearing here now. So maybe what I could do to fix this, let me move this water. Because I definitely do not want to get, spill my water all over my desk. So I'm just going to try this. Let me find something to lay this on since it's wet. I don't want to get my hole. So I'm going to lay this here and I'm going to see what happens. This is just an experiment. Let me dry my hands. I'm just going to put some directly on there. And see that helped it some. And then, let's see. That helped it a little bit there, and I can maybe drip some water from my uh, painter, water painters here. And I can kind of smooth that around. I'm going to get some water on my hand from the bowl 
and flick it on there. There, that looks like that's helping. So that's a way that maybe you can get some more color where you didn't get any when you dipped it in there. Or you could just start out getting your water color paper wet and then scraping some on there and letting it sit and see what happens. So that is number one on our list. If you're commenting, I can't really see the comments because my laptop is frozen here, I think. I'm going to try to reboot it a little bit here and see if I can get some more comments. I want to be sure and dry all this off from the water and everything. So that was technique number one. Technique number two is called, but we used to call, Poppin' Pastel. So let me get my papers over here for you. Now, when you do the Poppin' Pastels, you have to be sure that you, your Versamark pad is very well inked. So here we go. Okay, so now I can see you, and I'm trying to see if I can bring up the comment. Okay, now everything's set on my laptop. So here we go. And we're going to try this leaf and these words. So we put them on a block. And we're going to use our Versamark. And we're going to stamp it. Now you can't really see it because it's first of mark, but it's there. Next, I'm going to take, I have this scratch paper here, and I want to use some granny apple green. So what I'm going to do is, I am just going to scribble a little bit here, and you can see I got some flakes for the green, and I'm going to take my sponge dauber. And I'm going to pick up those little flakes. And I now you don't want to rub, you want to pounce. And voila, the leaves appear. So, if I wanted to, I want to add a little bit of darker green in order to give it a little bit of shadow so I'm going to not scrape I'm going to color again here with my mossy meadow I'm gonna kind of wipe off my sponge dauber a little pick up some of the darker green and just kind of go in here in certain places and bounce some darker green in there just to give it maybe a little bit of, of depth and shading so see how that works? You can just decide where you want to put some darker green. Or you could leave it all the lighter green if you'd like. You can just play with it just as long as you don't rub because that will smear it. Alright, now let's see what we can do. This is another one I did with the other stamp sets. With the other stamp from that same stamp set. Now we're going to see what happens if we put some words in there. So we're going to use these words. I just picked some random words. I'm going to stamp them up here. Today I'm not making cards. I'm just showing you ideas on how to use the blends. So now this, I want to make these have some poppy parade in them. So I'm going to add a little bit maybe of the mango melody. And maybe a little bit of the Daffodil Delight. So, I'm going to, I have some different sponge daubers over here. So I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to get some Mango Melody. 
for the words and I'm just going to pounce again and then on top of that I want to put some Poppy Parade Now this one I could be very dark because I'm using the lighter colors, but and then I'm going to use some daffodil delight up here at the very top. So the you can kind of just play with it. I need a little bit more yellow there maybe. So it's just a very light way to add some more. It's not if you use the darker colors, it would come out darker. But I want to show you how maybe you can make like a rainbow color for your greetings. I'm glad that I could help you. I watched a bunch of videos by Roba the Inner on Pinterest and stuff to find out these different ways because I know we used to have some a long time ago but I wasn't remembering everything that we could do with them. So this is one thing, this is, this is number two called, and we used to call it Poppin' Pastels because it pops out as you're pouncing with your sponge top. So let me clear this out and we'll go on to number three. Okay. Number three is direct coloring. So I have some. First, we're going to direct color onto basic black so that it. Sometimes I think we used to call this the chalkboard effect because that kind of looks like a chalkboard. And so we're just going to color directly inside our lines here. Now what we can do to get it a little bit smoother, we can use our finger or we can use a Q-tip just to kind of spread it around a little bit and fill in the, the little pieces that you miss. So this is coloring in direct to paper on basic black paper. So now let's see what happens if we wanted to color directly onto basic white. Here's a card I made. This is the one card I made where I colored directly on the three poppies and did it all and did this with uh, the white embossing powder. Okay, so here is our poppy again on basic white. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to color inside. I used Sierra Sand just because I think it kind of flows a little bit better than the, than the stays on or the memento when you're working on the white, on the basic white card stock. It doesn't make it such a stark difference. So then you would just use your Q-tip here to color it to fill in your spots and you want to get rid of the extra crumbs. And like I said, you could just color the whole thing. You could add a little bit of yellow here. Because maybe this is a multicolored poppy. And then some red, some poppy parade right here. And then you could kind of blend them together with your Q-tip. To give you even like an orange, more of an orangey color. So, that is tip number three, direct coloring. So, let's see another way that we can direct color. This time, we're going to use rubbing alcohol. And I'm just going to pour a little bit here in this 
I got these at uh, Hobby Lobby. I think I got four of them for like two fifty. They're not that much. And again, we're gonna take our um, pastel, the edge of our scissors, and we're going to scrape some crumbs here, trying to get them all into this little dip in the paint bowl. Okay. Then I'm going to take a regular little paintbrush. Let me find it here. Oh, here it is. I have too many things out. When you have this many techniques you want to show, you have a lot. So I'm going to dip my paintbrush. You're right. You can do a lot of different things with these, Barb, and get it to look really great like you were a great colorer. So I'm just going to mix that here with my crumbs and I'm going to, I'll do a paint on this one first. Now when you first put this down it's not going to look very dark. You have to let it, the alcohol dry and then it will really pop. Now, if you were going to go direct to paper on basic white, you want to use the shimmer white because it doesn't, because when you use basic white, sometimes it, the paper, because you get it wet, it wants to make those little, little balls that you get when you get your paper wet. So what we're going to do is we're using uh, alcohol, so we're going to use memento and we're going to place that there and we're going to do the same thing this time I think I'll use the purple I'm not sure if Poppy's coming purple but they are today So I'm going to use the edge of my scissors again and just scrape some purple crumbs into my dish. I'm going to get my paintbrush, dip just a little bit in the rubbing alcohol. I probably should have cleaned my brush first because it still has Poppy Parade on it. Okay, we'll try that again. We're going to get a little bit of alcohol and then we're just going to mix it really good with the gorgeous grape to be sure we pick up all those crumbs in there. And then again, we're just, I think I might be too low in the picture. Again, we're just going to paint with this. But like I said, you want to be sure and use the shimmery white paper or watercolor paper with this because basic white kind of starts to, I think they call it pilling when it just gets these little balls on there. So now I would just color in, and, like, and you can shade by going darker and lighter, and it always dries darker than you think. Because now look at this, that we could barely see the poppy parade when I was doing it, but it really pops when the alcohol dries. So this is step number, let me just see, I have them numbered over here, this is step number four watercoloring with the alcohol. Now if you wanted to, you could also watercolor with your aqua paint or your paint water, I forget what they call these, I think they call them water pens. So what I would do with this is, I would just take it directly off the pastel and I would color in now it takes a I must have had some purple on there so I just want to get my painter a little wet and I want to pick up some poppy parade 
Now again, you're not going to be able to see. This is not, it might not be as bright. We'll pick some off of here too as the alcohol, but we can't see until it dries. So it's kind of a two-step thing. You paint, you let it dry. If you think you need some more uh, color, you can paint in some more. So we're going to let that dry. And we're going to try the paint, the water brush here on our shimmery white paper. And this, you can see it a little bit better, but it gives you a more softer, it doesn't give you quite as dark coloring as either the direct coloring or the alcohol. It's a little softer of a color that you get with the water. Like I said, this will darken up a little bit when it dries. And then we can always see if we need to add some more. Or what you could do on your ones that you put it directly to the paper, you can kind of go through with this. But again, you have to wait now till it dries to be able to see that you filled in more of the leaf or the petal. Okay, so that is number five using the water cover, the water painters. So I'm going to kind of move this a little bit because I know I will hit this rubbing alcohol and it will go everywhere if I don't get it out of my way. And we'll put these over here for right now because we're going to try something else. We might come back to these. It takes a little while for that water. And you're going to have to put on a couple of layers when you use the water on the black. See how this is now turning back red again? Our poppy parade color again after it dries. Okay. So now... The next step that we're going to try is an embossing folder. So I've already embossed this piece of paper with the texture paint embossing folder. And let's see what color do we want this to be. We'll just say night and navy. We're just going to add some color to it. So we're going to take it like this and we're just going to lightly and wherever there's raised areas it will pick up the color. So see now if you were making a card using Night of Navy and you wanted a little bit of color in the background, this is how you could get it with the textured paint. Or if you had a flower embossing folder, which I do not have anymore, I looked for one, then you could do, uh, do this with the flowers and they would pop up, or leaves and they would pop up. But this is a very quick an easy way to use the pastels just to add a little bit of color. Now sometimes people they might rub off a little so what you can do is you can take any aerosol hairspray and hold it as far as you can and just give it a lot sh 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 with your uh, hairspray and that will set it. So Okay, now we're moving on to step number six. I would put the paste on there. I would smooth it out, fill in all the hearts. Then I would take my pastel here and I would scrape just a little bit of it onto the embossing paste and then I would kind of mix it up a little and smooth it out again and I might have some pretty colored hearts when I get done. I'm so sorry about that. I never, I should have checked that before I got on. It was a last minute, uh, it was a last minute idea I saw and so I didn't bother last night to go ahead and try it out. So I want to show you some other things that I that I did. 
and then I have one more technique with the so here I embossed this with white and I colored with the alcohol and the paintbrush to do these little flowers and the gorgeous grape and I did the leaves and mossy meadow and again I could cut this out I could use it on anything I could have used it as a whole card front like I did this one all right so now we have one more idea to show you and this is making a night scene now you could do this on basic white paper too and make like a sunset uh, sky with some ground but we're gonna try and make a night sky so we're going to take our night of navy and we're just gonna kind of lightly put some up in here And then we're going to take our gorgeous grape and we're going to kind of just fill it in. And then we're going to take our sponge dauber and we're going to kind of just, you keep going this back and forth because you want it to look like clouds in the sky and stuff. So now this will give it the idea that it's a, a night sky. Just lightly kind of blend them in. And then you could use the Coastal Cabana down here on the bottom for some water. So let's make our sky go a little bit further down. Put a little bit more of the gorgeous grape in there. These are kind of just fun to play with. You can just play with this however you like. Now this kind of looks like the night sky with some water. And then you could take the uh, lighthouse that we have and cut it out uh, color it and everything and then use the dye to cut it out and put it in here you could use a lot of different things and then if you had a gel pen or a paint pen let me find mine you could add some some stars in the sky Then you need to work some paint into the tip because this is a new one that I just opened so it's not quite ready. I had one laying here but I don't know what happened to it. Okay so here we come. So then we could just put some stars out here in our night sky. You could put more, you could put less. But like I said, you could add the lighthouse and the rocks in the lighthouse, or you could use the mountain air and put some mountains back here by using the dye and cutting it out and uh, adhering it on there. And so I have one more thing to show you, and then we will be done. So. Again, I'm going to have my shimmer white paper because it works much better than the basic white when you're getting something wet. And I'm going to use my blender pen. And we haven't really used Mossy Meadow too much. So even though a flower is not going to be Mossy Meadow, I'm just going to use it to color in. Again, this will give you... And we'll add some yellow to it. This is going to give you a much lighter color than the alcohol. So let's see what other, we can add some Coastal Cabana. Because we're just playing with this. I'm just taking it directly 
from the pastel and I'm coloring it in there and and you could layer this again like you did when you used alcohol let it dry and then add a little bit more you can really get uh, to be a painting artist with this So there's, those are just a few ways that you can use it. If you can think of other ways, let me know. But thank you for joining me. And again, these are on page 126 of the catalog. You get eight colors for $9. Have a great day. See you later. Bye.